Hey y'all, Instinct Survivalist come to you today with another review, this time of the Yuko Candle Lantern. Now you may be saying, well, wait a minute, Bill, you've got two of them up there, uh, and you know I don't do product comparisons, right? I'm not gonna do that. Uh, the difference is, is that both of them are from the same company. And the only reason I'm doing a comparison, if you will, is because I want you to see what the differences are between the two and why this one might be a better fit for you. So the, the review itself is for the Candle Lantern, um, not the solo, not the individual, if you will, uh, but for the Candle Lantern. One other thing, one thing of note, if you will, is that when you go in, you start saving up for these, and they're not that expensive, but um, some people still have to save for them, and that's okay, not a problem. Uh, I would actually go ahead and splurge for the neoprene cocoon. Uh, the reason being is because these actually protect, I've had uh, the single for a long time, I've had it with the neoprene cocoon and actually had it a package deal where they came together. Um, and I will tell you, I've taken and literally thrown it in my bag, uh, thrown it in the kit, had something bumping up, bumping up against it, and never had to worry about it. So uh, when I was able to go ahead and talk to Yuko about uh, doing the review for the Candle Lantern, I went ahead and invested in the cocoon because number one, I believe in the product. Uh, number two, um, I know it's one of those things that if I can take care of this uh, by adding a cocoon, this is gonna last me a good lifetime and I'll be able to pass it down to my kids. So let's take a look at the lantern itself and we'll look at some of the differences between the two um, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail about the, the actual candle lantern itself, okay? So stay tuned for that. We'll get a close up, we'll get repositioned and we'll go from there. Okay. So I'm gonna take the cocoons out of the way. We've already spoke about those. These are neoprene, by the way. Um, so we're gonna take those out of the way so that we can have a little bit more room to work with. I wanna start with the single. The reason being is because there's a couple of things that the single offers that the, the Lantern does not. Again, in product comparisons, I'm not bashing either one. I'm telling you what you get with both of the Yuko candles, okay? Uh, for starters, this actually has a reflector shield on it as well. Now I've actually taken, been bent mine a little bit so it fits down in the neoprene a little bit better secondly it actually has a candle window in it that candle window allows you to see how much more candle you have these are the differences along with the pop-up ability and the way you light it between the two uh, the two lanterns if you will okay so that being said, let's get on to the to the other stuff, right? The stuff, the meat, if you will. So lighting this, you slide down the glass, you slide down the um, the piece and light the candle. With the lantern itself, and I'm going to take the I'm going to take the single away. So again, we can focus on the one. The way you light this is not bringing the shield down. Okay, I can pull on it all day long, but there's actually a retainer clip in the back and on the sides that prevent that shield from sliding down. So uh, you can't light it that way. However, the way to light it is really easy. Just like you're changing batteries, right? You can take, take, spin, and go. Now, the other side of this is what is the other purpose of taking the top off so that I can work with things inside? And, and one of those is actually to change out the candles. Now, the thing about the candles um, and that, that see-through window, by the way, that we talked about on the smaller one, is actually, it is actually available when you, when you undo it uh, inside. Uh, you can't see it from the outside, but you can see it when you, when you pull off the top. So the other thing about it is when I go in and change out the candles, I have options, okay? It comes with regular wax candles. However, these candles can be replaced with uh, beeswax candles, and they actually burn a little bit brighter and you're gonna get a little bit longer burn time. Each candle in here burns nine hours. Now the one in the other, uh, in the smaller one, uh, I have not replaced it yet. I have bought replacement candles, and I still have about three quarters of a candle left, and I've been burning the crap out of that thing. But burn time is around nine hours according to, uh, the, st uh, according to the statistics on the site, or the, uh, uh, the information and description on the site, okay? The other thing is, is uh, you have the ability to have a citronella candle. They also sell these in blue, and it is citronella, and it's to help ward off bugs, right? Get your bugs, mosquitoes off. And that could be very beneficial from a perspective of looking at, do I want one of each in the candle lantern itself? Because you can light one individually, and you got the same things you have in the solo. 
However, um, I may want to put a beeswax one in here because I may need it brighter. I may want to have it dual with a wax and a beeswax. I may want to have a citronella candle in here so that hey, if there's a real bad bug problem, I don't have to worry about getting something else out. I have all those options within the lantern itself. And that to me is one of the biggest benefits of having this lantern. I don't have to worry about one candle and oh gosh, I got bugs, let me let me switch out the, the candle and put in the other one and, and then light it up. And you have the option of having all three loaded. And the, the again, the benefit is, is I don't have to switch them out later. Now, one of the other factors that we look at is, is okay, great Bill, how do you reload the lantern? How do you reload the candles? That to me is easy. It's no different than changing out a battery in a light. And so what we do is we take, we spin the top, we pull the candle out, sits on a platform, and then run it back down. Now that spring, some of you may go, well, wait a minute, why has it got a spring in there? The reason being is because what happens is that spring, and this is the same in the other one, the spring feeds the candle upward. Now that becomes beneficial to the fact of, or the value of that is now, I'm not having to worry about going in and trying to light down in it. It always comes to the top. So every time I burn one of these, it continually rises from the bottom to the top as opposed to me having to fight and find the wick as it goes down. Like normal candles, those go down. Well, when this goes down, if you will, it pushes it up to the top. That's what the spring is for. That becomes very beneficial when you look at it from a, a, a time perspective, uh, a safety perspective of having to find a freaking wick down in this tube. Um, you know, do I go in and find another candle or things of that nature? So that is, that is what we look at from the internal aspects of this lantern. Fair enough? All right, let's put this back together. Um, I'm going to light it and then we're going to put it back together because the next thing I want to do is this heat shield and, and you see it on the smaller one, got a heat shield there. Uh, this heat shield supposedly, one of the claims that they have, and this is one of those tests that I'm going to do, hey you claim it, I'm going to see if it happens, right? If I light all three of these candles and put this back on, this heat shield will apparently take my water and heat it up. Now will it bring it to a boil? I don't know. That's one of the tests we're going to do, and we'll probably have to do a time lapse um, to figure that out as far as time, because I do, do not know times in doing so. So let's go ahead and light this up. Wrong pocket. We are facing wind today, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Two. Three. All right, so we got all three of those lit. And we put in the shield. All right. And again, when you're putting it back in, you're just twisting the bottom to snug it in there, and you'll hear it click and feel it click as well. Okay. Each one of them does come with a, a wire for the top, the baling wire, if you will, or bale wire, uh, so that you can hang it. Uh, that becomes one of those things that uh, I would expect nothing less. Uh, I would expect nothing less from any lantern and uh, expect it even more or less, lesser, from Yuko. They, uh, they really are top of the line in my book. So let me get some water, we'll get it set on the top, and then uh, we'll come back to the video. So what you can see is I've actually done this, to be fair, uh, all fairness if you will, um, there's my marker, uh, I have put eight ounces of water in here, okay? Uh, we just want to make sure we're doing, you know, comparative burn times. And all three candles are lit. All right, what we're going to do is I'm, I've already got my timer set. Um, I've already started it. I started it as soon as I put the water in. And so we'll actually come back um, after the elapsed time because I don't want you to sit here and wait for a pot to boil, right? To watch pot never boils. All right, so I don't know if you can see that. I'm at 14 minutes. Um, it's hot. It's very hot to the touch. Uh, not boiling yet. Uh, I've got some time to kill, so let me see if we can get it to boil, how long it's going to take. One of the big factors we're facing right now is the fact that the wind is blowing like crazy because of the storms. Um, we have a brief intermission to do filming between the storms, so uh, we'll just wait and see what it looks like. Okay, guys, we're at 31 minutes, um, and the water keeps getting hotter and hotter. I'm starting to see a little bit of uh, steam rise off of it, so I know it's actually getting hotter and hotter. 
what I had to do, and you can see my hat, I actually pushed it off to the side uh, to try to form a heat shield or a wind shield, if you will, because that wind just keeps coming in and making it to where the candles uh, flames are leaning over. One of the things to think about in doing it this way is this is going to protect my candles and, and hopefully heat that water a little bit faster. Um, the other side of it is, is now you're looking at 30 minutes of candle burn time from a, an average nine hour candle. So now you're, you're, now you're down to eight and a half, eight and a half hours. Um, something to think about. That's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just a thing, right? Just facts. That's what I'm, what I'm here to present to you. Um, while we're waiting on this to boil, I don't think it'll be too much longer. Uh, I actually did the night footage last night. I want you to take a look at the differences in how the light up is between the two candles that we talked about. Um, the lantern, this one, and the single uh, as well. So we'll look at it from a distance. Uh, I think it was 20 yards. Um, and then um, we'll come back to this in a little bit. Okay, so what we're looking at on the right hand side is the solo, the individual uh, candle. On the left hand side is the Yuko candle lantern. So you can see kind of a difference in brightness there. Um, we're 20 yards out, so it's no mistaking there's something out there. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll walk in, see what we see, and you'll see the difference in brightness as we get in closer. Keeping in mind that, that uh, the single does not have the reflector on it. It's like we're <laughs> heading to a car. All right, so as we get up closer, now I'm right in front of both of them and you can see real easy that the actual, on the, on the right hand side is actual physically closer than the one on the left hand side. So the lantern's actually a little bit farther away by about a yard um, and you can see just the difference in brightness um, with those. Again, if we did them this way, it makes it allows us to go a little bit brighter. And this is just about seeing the brightness. This isn't about looking at the, you know, the candle and the, the glowing ambiance. It's just about seeing the brightness right now. Okay. So the second part of this is determining how bright or what we can see with the lantern itself. And so you can see we're next to a leaf or next to a limb. And you can see pretty well as far as that goes. And this is with the single, again, with the single alone. Okay, and now we're looking at it with the lantern. And you can see that I'm looking at a branch. And the camera doesn't quite do it justice, but I can see into the tree itself. So we can determine how deep we are and how, you know, how much we can see. Uh, so it's definitely throwing off, well, three candle power, if you will. Um, throwing off more light. Uh, for us to be able to do what we so need from to do. here the reason i want to do it from above is because what you're not looking at is you're not looking at the candles directly you're actually seeing how much light is being emitted from them uh, from a top fashion again there, you'll see the reflector right there in the middle for the solo for the for the individual um, but you can see just the amount of light that's being thrown uh, from each one of these just by doing it this way Okay, y'all, for those of you following along on time, uh, we're in an hour and 15 minutes. The temperature just dropped about five degrees uh, because we're going to get another rainstorm coming in. You can probably see a difference in the shadow. Uh, again, we're at an hour and some change. The thing is, is do I call this a failure for boil? Not quite. What I would do if I were to do this in the future is I would get me some heavy duty aluminum foil because uh, it folds up nice and flat and then use that as a, a shield a wind shield uh, to keep it from blowing down in there uh, I think it would actually burn burn I think it would actually boil um, a lot sooner I think probably around 30 minutes uh, if we were to do the wind shield and the thing is that the uh, the directions actually say a small amount of water could boil heat or melt snow. Now, will it melt snow? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. Is it steaming right now? Yes, absolutely. Has the water level dropped? Yeah, because it's been sitting here simmering for a while. Um, and will it heat water? Yes. I knew to know that for a fact. Again, steam coming off and I burnt my finger twice just testing to see if the temperature's rising or not. So that's my, my two cents. I wouldn't call it a failure. Uh, I think I would do things to, to 
and you know make it better for survivability if it were that case i mean the reality is i'm not not replacing my stove um but this will do you know evening time i'm getting ready for bed i want to put on a, a pot of water to boil uh sorry a pot of water for tea or something like that for the evening time great idea great factor in that um, but there's a lot of factors to determine whether it's going to boil or not so um, that's my two cents on the boil part again not necessarily a failure so there you go now you see why this is beneficial why the candle lantern is such a bonus or benefit to utilize even if you already have the single even if you already have the the smaller brother if you will the little brother little baby sister whatever you want to call it uh, there's a reason and a method and a purpose for the actual candle lantern. Not only does it give off more light, not only does it uh, heat up water, um, but it is one of those things where you have a lot of flexibility as far as the candles themselves go. So, hey guys, thanks for everything you do. Thanks for your likes, your, your retweets, your subscribes, your, everything that you do. I really, really appreciate it. And I can go through the list, but everything that you do for me thanks for the viewing the viewing has gone up with the two tip tuesdays don't forget uh tuesday to check out the new one coming up and don't forget to check out the other two um, those can be reached here so until then use your instincts to survive thanks for watching so there you go now you see the benefits of going for a plane going overhead people know I'm filming.